We're going to be looking at some of the most affordable places to buy a home in Florida in the year 2023. Literally, we're going into 2024 with some of the most ridiculous real estate prices we have ever seen. And that's leaving a lot of people wondering where they can find affordability. And if you're looking at the state of Florida, I'm going to give you a few suggestions of places that are affordable that you can still kind of live in. When you put affordability at the top of your priorities, you're going to give up safety and a lot of other conveniences. By giving you guys this list, I feel like I'm almost setting you up for a nightmare. And that is because when you make affordability your number one concern, you're going to end up with a pile of garbage because that is exactly what these places are in comparison to other places in Florida. I like to set up people for success, not for failure. But when you ask me a question like, what are the most affordable places in Florida? Believe me, there's a reason these places are affordable. So these are not per se the most affordable places in Florida. These are the most affordable places in Florida if, well, you had no other option. It's like walking into a car dealership and buying the most affordable car they have on the lot and wondering when it breaks down, why it broke down. Number one is LaBelle, Florida, where you can get a three bedroom, two bath for under $270,000. And that is a new construction. Number one is Port LaBelle, which is a suburb of LaBelle, Florida. This is a rural county in Southwest Florida. Port LaBelle are the outskirts of the city of LaBelle, which has a lot of problems, to be honest. It really doesn't look all that great analytically. There's not a lot of jobs in this area, but it is affordable, and you're going to get a huge commute in the Southwest Florida if you need a job. I would definitely look into what your electric bill is going to be before purchasing a home as some areas are extraordinarily expensive out here. I'm not saying everybody's paying too much money for their electric bill, but depending on the electric company you can get, it can be as much as $500 a month for a 3-2. So make sure you look into that aspect of it because sometimes, like I said, what looks to be a great deal on paper when you start really looking into it. There's a reason it's more affordable. In the case of LaBelle, there's definitely no jobs and crime has been a concern for a lot of people. Number two is Inverness, Florida, which is actually a very nice little town. So you're probably wondering, why would a nice little town be so affordable? There's a few reasons. You would think that having an overwhelming population of elderly and retired people and it's affordable, what could possibly go wrong here? Well, those elderly people receive a lot of prescription medication and they're all mostly on fixed income. That leads to this county having one of the highest drug overdose death rates in the United States. By far the highest in Florida, with 83 out of 100,000 people every single year dying from an overdose death. What has led to this problem is very straightforward. You have a large elderly population that's retired, and the only industry for the young people is working in medicine, which means that there's a lot of pharmaceuticals moving around. A recent comment from somebody said that a lot of times the elderly people are going to use their pharmaceuticals to barter with the youth to have their lawn mowed or to do other activities. So if you don't mind living in a community where just about everybody is stoned out of their mind, then I guess Inverness, Florida could work for you. Probably a horrible place to have family and children, but if you're retired and don't mind being around other retired people who are at this point professional dealers, it really is an embarrassment what Florida has become. But you can get a house out here that needs a crap load of work on five acres for under a hundred thousand dollars many people here report wandering homeless people at night going through their properties going through their sheds stealing anything they can for a quick fix localized flooding due to the with river is also a huge concern out here and job opportunities are literally non-existent in this region of florida that has quite literally nothing to offer on the bright side a lot of people from south florida have moved into this area so you can still get that good cuban cuisine and other florida cuisines that you like so if you're from south florida looking for somewhere more affordable 
there are some little touches of South Florida and Inverness. So if you miss your good Cuban food or other Caribbean foods, you can still find it in this region of Florida. So if eating out is important to you, at least you're not stuck with the Burger King. Number three is Lake Placid, located in South Central Florida, part of the Sebring metropolitan area. You can comfortably find a home here that's livable for under $200,000. Highlands County is a horrible place to do business and more fitted for affordable retirement. They do have a Publix, which is something a lot of these small towns are not going to have. And they also have a lot of lakes, so if you like being on the water, bass fishing, there's a lot of great things to do. Being in South Central Florida, there's a lot of elevation, so flooding is not a concern here. I would definitely stay clear of Highway 27 and avoid the town center and be somewhere in the outskirts of this small little city. This is a heavily undeveloped area and the isolation lends itself very well to concealing criminal activities. Isolation and poverty are definitely present in this part of Florida. And unseen levels of poverty concealed into areas that most people in the state will never see but if you venture into some parts of lake placid you'll see some of the most impoverished and miserable areas in the entire state of florida where people are subsisting on literally nothing since it's an area that doesn't have any industry and the few industries that exist like agriculture don't pay very well that makes it one of the most affordable places in florida and if you end up somewhere on the outskirts not directly in an older neighborhood you might be okay Number four is Panama City. If you want to live in Florida for the beaches and live near the beach but not pay those ridiculous price tags, Panama City could definitely be the place for you to find affordability. It puts you right near Panama City Beach. Even in today's crazy market, you can actually find a house here for under 180000 that is inhabitable. Now, I will tell you, it's a tourist beach town. There's no economy here except for tourism, which is gone throughout most of the year. And when the tourists are gone, the poverty here is mesmerizing. Hurricanes come in frequently and powerful, and when they do, a lot of the people are not able to rebuild their homes, which means that they end up being abandoned. When people who live in Alabama and visit here frequently don't move to this area, that should be an indication of how impoverished this region of Florida is. With a dependency solely on tourism, no other industry or ways to make an income, this is definitely one of the poorest places to live in the state. The city is known for its high crime rates and prevalence of lawlessness. A lot of times people in this town are just left in poverty and misery but it is affordable and you do get access to some of the most beautiful Florida beaches at a price that you'll not find in Southern Florida. However, you can expect the water temperatures here to be noticeably cooler than in South Florida. For a good part of the year, the water temperatures here are just too cold for most of us to enjoy swimming. You can actually find a house on Panama City Beach for around $300,000 where you can walk to the beach. You won't find that anywhere else in the state of Florida, but you also won't find tourism from the deep south. I'll tell you what, southwest Florida, southeast Florida, we see tourism from the northeast and the midwest. This is where tourists from the deep south go to, which might explain some of their crime analytic issues. Moreover, a lot of the crime and homelessness from adjacent states that are much more strict flows over into this part of Florida because criminals are looking for a place that isn't as harsh when they get jammed up with the law. All right, before we move on to the next city, I want to show you guys a map of Jacksonville, Florida. Every red dot represents a house for under 200000 You'll notice that the properties under $200,000 also perfectly correlate with the neighborhoods that have the most crimes and murders. You really do get what you pay for. Number five is Tallahassee, Florida, the state's capital. Let's say you want to live where all of Florida's problems originate. I honestly don't even think Florida's governors actually live in Tallahassee. I think they just like go here when they absolutely have to. 
But if you're in the market for under $200,000, you can have the privilege of living in this mess of a city year round. Jose, we are like a college town with like incredible vibes. Being a college town in Florida, this place is absolutely wild and nuts. And the rental base is rotating constantly and very few people would want to live here full time. Job opportunities are limited because a lot of the young people are looking for jobs. And after all, you're in the state of Florida where there aren't any jobs to begin with. In this part of Florida, you'll be lucky if you can get a job at Wendy's as an adult. Nonetheless, it is surprisingly affordable to live here and there are a lot of older houses which means there's more volume of real estate that would usually be more affordable. So if you're looking to move to Florida and don't mind living in a quote unquote hip town full of cockroaches, if you're afraid of cockroaches, this may not be the town for you. And crime. This place is rampant with crime, car racing, all types of hood crappery goes down in Tallahassee on a level that is quite annoying and disturbing. People are informal and well, you get the idea. It's a college town in Florida. In most places in Florida, people like red clowns. In this part of Florida, they like blue clowns. Number six is Crestview, Florida. This is kind of out in the Florida panhandle again. You can legitly find a house that's nice for under 150 and have easy access to some of the best beaches in Florida along the panhandle like Miramar Beach, Destin, Fort Walton Beach. All that is not far away. Fairly easy drive. The town has just about everything you're going to need. Even though it's small, it is growing fast. A lot of people from Alabama are moving here and that could be a downside for a lot of people like me. Well, to be honest, living here is somewhat similar to living in Alabama, but with a Florida address. So analytics here just simply don't look great. Regionalism is a huge issue here. You have people from Florida, people from Alabama, people who don't like northerners, people who don't like places. You get the idea. It's just a very regionalistic if not downright racist place to live. So if you're an outsider and you move here, you're going to deal with people who are very regionalistic and that can be a hindrance, kind of an annoyance to deal with all the time. And again, you have a place that's full of people from a place that don't like other people, even though they're in a place they're not from. What a nightmare, complete mess. So if you move here, just understand that you're literally in the deep south. So if you speak like this, you might be all right. But if you speak normal, for example, this may not be the place you want to end up. I'm sure there was a better way to make my point there, but that's the way I went about it. So it is what it is. Now, Jose, I've been following your channel for a long time, buddy. But every time you make these little country jokes, you get me a little bit wound up. I'm getting a little bit fed up now, which starting not to like it too much. But yeah, I like the video, so I watch it anyways. Can you believe how sensitive some of these old farts are? They have all types of names for all other people. They do all types of horrible things to people like me when they move to a rural area. But the moment you make fun of their accent, now they get all offended now. When they get their panties all tied up in a night so quick now. I thought you had a tough skin. You want the rest of us to have a tough skin. But what happens when I make fun of your southern accent? You get your panties all wound up now, don't you? What, what am I doing? What the, what the crap is this video about anyways? I, I, I forgot what I... What were we, what were we talking... We're doing... Oh, yeah, yeah. Places that suck, but they're affordable. But people move there because they don't have any other options. Okay, let's keep going with this. Number seven is Daytona Beach, Florida. I guess if you had to, you had no other options and some money, you could move to Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, personally, you couldn't pay me to move here. But I guess some people were actually willing to pay to move to this beautiful Florida beach town. What are you gonna deal with living in Daytona Beach? It's so redneck that my redneck friend thinks it's too redneck for him. And he drives a 1980s pickup truck, lives in a trailer, and said this to me holding a Bud Light beer. And that was before Bud Light came out of the closet. But uh, you know, I wondered, he never really did stop drinking Bud Light. You can literally get a house in Daytona Beach for about 155 that's somewhat livable, and it usually comes with a meth lab. And there's a lot of events in this city. There's Daytona 500, there's Bike Week, there's Meth Week. Then there's the month of debauchery. It's an entire month of debauchery. 
And January 1st starts the crime year. That's an entire year of crime. And then you have the decade of Fent, which has basically been like, you know, the last decade in Daytona Beach, basically. People celebrate this by leaning over on a sidewalk, holding a sign saying, come on, man, give my daughter, man. The homes are cute and cozy and they're affordable. And I would definitely make sure you don't end up with one of these registered folks next door. F DLE for the Department of Law Enforcement has a website. If you're moving to Daytona Beach, make sure you don't end up in a neighborhood or a community, as they call it. What do they call it now? A village. I would call it a absolutely horrendous place to live. Just make sure you look at that because there's a lot of communities in Daytona Beach where just about everybody is a registered pervert. I was say, when I moved to Daytona, my neighbor Larry was the friendliest guy I ever met. However, one day I found out that Larry was too friendly. We're getting married, Jose. <laughs> you just gotta crack up because I said I was practicing like my redneck voice and somebody walked by my apartment and when they heard me saying a guy voice, we're getting married, they're like screaming their head off. So yeah, I'm just entertaining you guys at home. I'm also entertaining my neighbors who can hear me scream stuff like, get her done at two in the morning. They're like, what the crap is going on in that apartment next door? I tried to explain to the Korean people that I'm really not a racist person, that I just do this for YouTube. And uh, well, they moved out either way. It might have been that one night at two in the morning where I was recording a video for you guys and I was like, my country, my people, if you weren't born here, don't belong here. And then uh, I guess that might have been the icing on the cake for them if they're trying to sleep. Number eight is the Funiac Springs. Let's say you've been listening to Jason Aldean lately and you want to live in a small town because you think crime isn't going <laughs> to... I'm just trying not to laugh. Hold on, hold on. You should have no problems finding a house here for under $200,000 in a charming little town. So if you want to live in like a beautiful little town with a lake, old historic houses, it really has a lot of charm. And the people really are great out here. Just kidding, it's in the Florida Panhandle, but you get the idea. It's affordable and they do have great vibes. I mean, if you're looking for a small town and you're okay with all the safety. <laughs> um, that, that, he's good at satire comedy. I'll tell you one thing about Jason Aldean is he is one funny dude, man. Talking about it's safe in these small towns. You move to Defuniac Springs and, and, and enjoy the safety there, okay? But it's a beautiful southern historic town, and I'm sure that makes the people that live here just perfect. So if you're looking for a small, charming little town with kind people and southern hospitality, and of course, like all small towns, we all heard that Jason Aldean song, so we, we know these towns are safe. You can just go ahead and move to the Funiac Springs and just let me know how it goes when you move out again. Number nine is Avon Park. Even the calligraphy got more gangsta when we reached the end of today's list. For $160,000, you can actually get a three bedroom, three bath house in Avon Park. That should just give you an idea how undesirable this town is. But again, if you're on a budget, you can't be too picky. And now that we're ending up towards the end of my list, these towns aren't gonna get any better. I guess if affordability was your absolute only concern, you could end up in Avon Park. So let's say you're an elderly person looking for affordability and you move to Avon Park, Florida. What can you expect from your neighbors when you meet them? Let's just suppose you're an 89 year old woman from Michigan. I just moved here from Michigan. My name is Martha and I'm 89 years old. Hey Martha, you're wearing all the wrong colors, Holmes. You better get your act together. You're not gonna last too long around here. You hear me, Vata? First of all, Vata, you're disrespecting my hood dressed like a Bugambila plant, you hear me? Number 10 is Okeechobee, Florida, located right next to Lake Okeechobee. If you like fishing in contaminated lakes, you can actually get a house here for like $150,000 and then live out the rest of your miserable life in a miserable place. An affordable, miserable place. Despite the fact Okeechobee actually has most of the stores you're gonna need, the town still has a long way to go. Or in the case of the people retiring here affordably, a short time to live. I guess if they weren't old, they could go bass fishing in the many lakes or other flooded neighborhoods in the area. If you see somebody flopping around on the ground, it'll be hard to tell if they're having an overdose 
or if they're just uh, maybe, I don't know, just stressed out from living in Okeechobee. But whatever the reason, don't touch them. And again, if you listen to a Jason Aldean song, you might think that living in a small town would be just a dream. But the reality and reviews that I've seen from people who've lived in this town are along the lines of, wow, who knew a small town could be this crappy? To sum it all up, if Hank Hill from King of the Hill lived in Florida, he would live in Okeechobee. All right, guys, so those are the top 10 best options that poor, broken, miserable people have when moving to the state of Florida. And if you're moving to Florida on a budget, man, I'm telling you, this is probably not the state you want to do that to. A lot of the homeless people that I meet tell me that they ended up coming here from other states and they wish they just had enough money to go back to where they came from. So if you're moving to Florida affordably, a lot of people are looking at Florida, but they're broke. This is a state you will dearly regret moving to if you're on a limited income. On the bright side, Okeechobee is affordable. It's got a decent downtown and it's segregated with Hispanics people living in the northwest side of the city. The northeast side of the city is black and anything in the south side of the city is white. So if you move there, make sure you know the local rules. And there is a lot of traffic through this city because it's in the center of the state. And that means that uh, you could also, I guess, deal with dump trucks, even though it's a small town. I hope you liked the video and subscribe to my channel, even though I probably offended you in 20 different ways that I wasn't even aware of. All right, guys, that's today's video. I hope you were not too offended by it and you subscribe to my channel where I can say even more offensive things about you. By the way, if there's something that offends you in particular, but I didn't really touch on, please let me know what offends you so I can offend you in the next video. So if you're offended by Shao Shao dogs or cauliflower based pizza, whatever it is you are offended by or sensitive about, if you could please let me know if I haven't offended you yet. So if you're subscribed to your sh this channel and you've been watching me for a few years and I haven't said something offensive about you yet, let me know what button I'm not pushing to get these comments rolling. And if you're one of those people that is a hater but you still like to watch my videos, I hope you die in a nursing home in Alabama where the workers are too lazy to clean you up after you crap yourself. And if you're one of those people that watches my video from a prison cell, I hope the warden doesn't catch you.